So now we're going to do the cam timing. Um, this is a, a V2 engine turning tool, I think, um, or someone else's, but it's just a generic tool. It has two prongs that go into the end of the crank and a bolt that holds it in. Need to make sure it's nice and tight, but it's only an 8mm bolt, so don't go nuts. I sort of, over time, I usually tear the threads off these bolts fairly regularly. Um, the degree wheel is a crane cams wheel that I've had for years and years and years. Um, I like this one because the numbers work in terms of before and after events. So it's pretty easy to find the number you're looking for. When you're doing cam timing, you need to understand what it is that you're looking for. A lot of people get very confused with cam timing um, the first time they do it. And so you just need to know the numbers you expect to see and when you expect to see them. Um, because two rotations of this is one cycle of the camshafts, you just need to be aware of what you expect to happen when. Um, to set top dead centre up, we know about where top dead centre is because we look at the timing shaft and we know that that's about it there. And usually with these tools, you'll find that vertical top dead centre firing is there. And because horizontal top dead centre firing is 270 degrees before the vertical or 450 after, if these are flat, they're going to be vertical for the horizontal top dead centre firing. So that's about where top dead centre is now. Top dead centre inlet firing. Now I tend to use a piston stop to find top dead centre. I used to use a dial gauge tool, but I sort of got the feeling over time that the dial gauge didn't really follow the piston on the way down. And it might have made a degree or two difference, which it's not much, but I sort of like doing it this way now. Um, with these engines, the two valves, the spark plug threads at an angle like so. That this tool goes in on an angle like that. So it pokes a fair way into the cylinder. On a 900, it will hit the, the inlet valve because the inlet valve opens up and open, well, can open into the tool. And because this is stronger than the valve, you'll probably bend the valve. So to make sure the inlet valve isn't going to hit the top dead centre tool, we use the tool between top dead centre firing and top dead centre overlap. In that instance, the exhaust valve opens, but it doesn't come far enough into the cylinder to hit the top dead centre tool, whereas you'll be able to see the inlet valve. If you look through the spark plug hole and turn the engine over, you can see the inlet valve when it starts to open. You can see the inlet valve there. So we just don't want to put the inlet valve into that. That's top dead centre firing, so we go 90 degrees past it. Put the top dead centre tool in. This is an adjustable one that I made. Oh, wrong tool. This is an early 400 and has a big spark plug, a big B series spark plug, not the D series spark plug that this tool is made for. Okay, because of the B series plugs in this engine, I've got this other top dead center tool. It's not as nice, meaning it's not as adjustable as the other one, which I use all the time, but I use this so rarely that this is all I need. Um, and I'll just screw it in far enough that it stops the engine. Now, realistically, you know pretty much where the top dead center is going to be. This is an earlier engine with a sight glass through to the flywheel. So there's top dead center marks on the flywheel. You can see it. They're not 100% accurate. It might be a couple of degrees off either way, or they might be accurate. But if you set everything up there, it gives you, you should be within a couple of degrees. So it's a good starting point. So engine at top dead center, horizontal firing. I go past and I'll screw the tool in. I might set it up about 10, 15 degrees after. Oh, I think that's where it stopped anyway. Yep. Okay, so it's stopping at 11 degrees after top dead center. So we go around now this way. The exhaust valve's opening now to this side and we'll see what we get. Just move it around and it'll stop. Don't spin it crazily fast and mash your piston into the stop. That's about 13 and a half. So I need to set it about 12 and a half or so. All my stock tools are usually bits of bent coat hanger. It's very handy. So that's about where that one stops. And that is now on 12 and a half degrees. Go back this way. 
and it's about 11 and a half degrees. So let's pull it back a little bit, set it to 12. Again, this is one of those things you get a feel for over time. 12, happy with that. So I'll call that an accurate top dead center. If you have got the sight glass, you can set it at top dead center and look through and just see where it is relative to your mark. And that way you can a bit of a visual test for later to make sure it hasn't moved. And this one is basically right on the mark, which is a bit surprising, but sometimes they're right. So top dead center is set to the degrees, wheels in the right place. For the lift tool, I do have factory tools for four valves, so two valves. I've got a collection of things I've made up over the years. Um, basically, you just need to hold a dial gauge, hold it so that it's in line with the valve, so it will follow the valve movement pretty accurately. And some sort of foot, again, bent coat hanger wire, works really well, uh, for the valve movement. And if we turn it over, you'll watch the valve going down there because that was overlap. Back to top dead center, firing. Inlet valve shut, exhaust valve shut, zero of the dial gauge, and now we're going to turn it over and measure the inlet opening and closing points. The inlet's not going to open until just before top dead center overlap, so that's only one full turn before we see the inlet valve open. So we go all the way around, and about here somewhere, it's 90 degrees. When's it going to start moving? There. Okay, so we go around till the valve lifts one millimetre. As you can see, it's very retarded. Maybe because we were rattle gunning on the, the uh, nut so long that it's pulled the pulley halves. These pulleys are much like a standard pulley off the, the late model bikes where you've got the part that is keyway to the, to the camshaft is clamped between two plates and has slots and it, that allows it to move. And so it's the, the friction on the, the two plates that clamp that locate the cam. It's more than enough for these cams in terms of a, uh, a friction drive. But it may have moved with the rattle gun, which is not what it experiences when it's running. So we'll back the screws off. On these ones, it's four little screws. And when you back the screws off, often the, you'll see it move around a bit. You don't try and back things off and have it all stay still because it just won't, it will move around. I usually use one of these tools to turn the cam. Now these are cams, the standard specs on these is inlet opens 11 degrees before top dead centre and closes about 70 degrees after. That gives you about 119 0.5 degree centre line. Um, I usually set them to 108 in the 400s. Um, they've got more than enough piston to valve clearance to go to 108 degrees. Uh, 108 is about where the cam is meant to be. In the F1 it was made to be 110. So, And the real way you often see that is that if you check the inlet and exhaust figures, the what we call lobe separation, which is how far the lobes are apart, tells you how the cam was designed and these these cams have about 110 degrees lobe separation and usually if you have 110 separation if you set the inlet at 110 the exhaust is at 110 and that's nice on these as Ducati set them they're like 119 and 102 or something which looks wrong when you look at the camshaft um, so at these on 108 um, they work really well on the 400s it moves the peak power point down from sort of 10 and a half, 11,000 revs down to about nine and a half. So you don't need to rev it as hard, but the power peak flattens off sort of over nine pretty much. So it's just nicer on the engine. Um, I like to advance two valve cams as much as I can pretty much um, to fill out the mid range. So this one with all the pulley half screws loose, Nip them a little bit up. And we'll turn the cam over again. Spin it over to the start. 
We want it opening. If the standard spec is, I think it's 1270, we're going to advance the cam 12 degrees. We want it opening at about 24 degrees before top dead center. So you can see it's a lot, a lot past that. So I'll just bump it up a whole lot. Didn't move when I did that. So I need to advance the cam quite a lot. And for a guess, I'll go about that far. With the adjustable pulleys, it's quite easy to go a long way without really knowing it. So don't get too carried away. You just creep up on the adjustment fairly quickly. And we'll go around to the closing point now. Now that the valve's coming down, you can check on this little indicator in the middle where the, that gives you an absolute of where it was. I didn't pay any attention, so I don't know, but we come round to the zeros. That one's 65, and it's shut. So 65 on that one. We'll go back again to when it opens. And this time we've got 10 degrees. So at the moment it's 1065. When you're doing this, often the, what, the numbers you get won't match the cam specs. Uh, because there is clearance in here, that will also affect it. Some people take the clearance out, and you can do that by putting a feeler gauge in if you want. You can go back a bit and put a feeler gauge in there. I'll put a 0.13 in. And that will have it about one degree earlier, probably about 12 degrees. So that chart makes a little bit of change. I don't bother doing that um, because the clearance at both ends of the ramp is pretty much the same. So I just do it as it is. Uh, it's just my way of doing it. Um, you can do it your own way. Um, the main thing with all this sort of stuff is that there's certain conventions. Um, the convention for a two valve engine is the belts at running tension. They aren't over tight like a Desmo Quattro is. And this is the way I do it. Um, Again, you can do it any way you like. It's up to you. You're just chasing a number um, and you can do it as suits you or as you see fit. Some people have certain beliefs with stuff, so just do it your way. Um, not much point telling me my way is wrong. I don't really care. This is just how I do it. Uh, and in terms of relevance, anyone else's method is as good or relevant as mine, realistically. So we've got that opening about 10, so we want to advance it about, what, about 12 degrees over that. Well, actually, we've got 10.65. We'll come back down to one millimeter above closed, which is 65. So to work out a center line, a center line is just a mathematical number. It's not anything you can measure because camshafts are not generally not ground symmetrical with their numbers. So to work out the center line, it's 10 plus 65, which is 75, plus 180, which is the bit in between the bottom dead center and top dead center, which gives us 255 divided by two is 127 and a half, minus the 10, gives us 117.5. And that's the inlet center line is 117.5. So we're 10 degrees off. So we need it opening at 20 degrees. So we might move the degree wheel around to 20. This is one way of doing it. If you do it there, then you can crack the nut, the little clamp screws on the pulley, but often it, it will move the pulley, which makes the result a bit harder. And then you turn anti-clockwise advances the camshaft. So we go to about there, nip the screws up again, <clears throat> and we'll see how close we are. So we go all the way around to closed, and then go again. And that's 20. This should be about 55 or so. 
55, and then the extra mil is closed. So 2055 should give us 107 and a half. That's a close enough to 108. If you're going for 108, 107 to 109 is realistically within the range you're working at. And that's that. So now you just got to torque the pulley clamp screws up. And once they're torqued, uh, it's done. Cam timed.